Hi everyone, welcome back to JPWHU TV. It's nice to see you. I hope you're keeping well and having a good start to your weekend. This is the preview of West Ham's 12th home game of the 23-24 Premier League season where we welcome Arsenal to the London Stadium for a second time this season for our fourth home London derby this season for a two o'clock kickoff this Sunday afternoon live on Sky Sports in the Premier League. As always guys, this video is sponsored by the channel sponsor 3retro.com. Please click the link in the description below that will take you directly through to the West Ham section of their website but as you can see from the icon that's up here there's also Arsenal gear in there as well along with track jackets, polo shirts, sweatshirts and t-shirts made by Admiral Numbro so go check those out. Any purchases you make through the link in the description below the commission that the channel would normally be getting as I always say I'll be sending on to the charity Iron Supporting Food Banks. They're based in the Newham area and they're helping those in the Newham area and the Essex County and further afield for that matter to help put food on the tables for those who've been really struggling over the last four to five years as they've been supporting 20, 39 separate food banks last I remember. So guys, go grab yourself a really nice retro shirt. You'll be saving yourself a few quid in comparison to your respective club shop if there's any Arsenal fans watching and you'll be helping those less fortunate than you and I. So as always, guys, there's timestamps in the description below so go check out any section of the video you want. I'd love you to stay around for as long as possible, get those viewing figures up and you to put your comments in the comment section at any time to give me your thoughts on the subjects. But if you can't that's fine as well by all means please do jump around to the sections that you want to look at and of course please do like share and subscribe because we are so close to two and a half thousand and for some reason there's, there's zero growth on this channel it's it's i know you guys are enjoying the content a lot of people have been watching or unsubscribed recently so please do hit that subscribe button so guys let's start by talking about the officials the referee for this game is craig paulson his assistants are mark perry and steve meredith the fourth official was graham scott on var we have john brooks and his assistant is lee betts now this is interesting guys as we remember We've beaten Arsenal twice this season, once in the League Cup and once away in the Emirates. Can we do this three for three without Pakatar? Yes or no? Put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking on this. Now, our last six Premier League home games against Arsenal show that we've won one, drawn three and lost two, scoring eight goals and conceding ten. David Moyes' home record in the Premier League against Arsenal shows he's won four, drawn six and lost seven. Arsenal are, at the time of this recording, third in the table with 15 wins, four draws and four losses, scoring 47 and conceding 22. So for those keeping track on the mathematical scale, it's 25 points plus goal difference. And they are currently sitting on 49 points. Joint second with Man City. Two points behind league leaders Liverpool. Who are absolutely on course to smash it this season. Now that, Especially now that Jurgen Klopp is now leaving. But we'll talk about that with the Liverpool game further on in the season. Uh, Arsenal's man squad is 26 versus R21. So... Yeah, they can rotate a lot better than we can. Arsenal's away record so far this season shows they've won six, drawn two and lost three in the Premier League, scoring 17 and conceding 11, so a plus six goal difference. Their last five Premier League away games is a little bit of a mixed bag of results. They've won two, drawn one and lost two. Now, we all know their strengths, but the only weakness Arsenal seem to have so far this season is beating the offside trap. That's it. So, can we do this? We'll talk about that a little bit later. But in terms of injuries for Arsenal, defensive midfielder Partey is currently being assessed due to a thigh injury, as is Suchenko with a calf injury. No expected return date as yet for either player at the time of this recording. By the guy, guys, by the time this goes out, I'm guessing the conferences would have gone, gone ahead and therefore you would have known more information. But at the time of this recording, this is where it's standing. Centre-back Timber is out until towards the end of April by the looks of it due to a knee injury. Attacking midfielder Vieira is out until mid-February um, due to a groin injury. So he's going to be he's going to miss this and maybe back next week. Centre forward Jesus is a 25% chance of returning to, to for this fixture due to a knee injury. I don't really think he will. I do think, however, he will be right winger Saka is 75% chance of returning to, for this fixture due to an ankle injury. So, yeah, might not necessarily be in the starting 11, but I do think he'll be in the squad. When it's 75 chance, 70, sorry, 75% chance of returning. It's as good as done. Right back, Tommy Asu's Japan lost in the AFC Asian Cup semi-final to Jordan on Saturday night. Um, or Saturday day, I think it would have been for 
our time anyway. Uh, so he could be back for this game. So Tommy Ass is a very, very good player. A lot of very good players, as we know from uh, in terms of the Arsenal squad. But for those that I do think we need to keep an eye out for, as the aforementioned Saka is their highest goal scorer on three goals and four assists. He's on joint uh, goal scoring tally with Kai Havertz on three goals as well. Saka is also their highest assister with Odegaard right behind him on three assists and two goals. Saliba is their highest aerial duel winner with an average of two and a half goals. Sorry, two and a half, aver two and a half per average um, aerial duel winners won per game with Magalis. I think you pronounce that on an average of 2.1 per game. Now, of course, we welcome back Declan Rice. He didn't exactly have the best of um, greetings, shall we say, when we played him in the League Cup. I hope people have grown up a little bit since then. Because um, at the end of the day, we all knew he was going to move on at some point. Yes, okay, the, the, I get the reason why he was booed quite a fair bit. Because at the end of the day, he was courting Arsenal for, from basically January until he moved. So, which is understandable. You know, we've done, we've talked about it before. I've done videos on it, so that, that I'm not going to go over any further. But let's turn to West Ham now, guys. Um, this is the predicament we're currently in. All right, because I know again, I know David Moyes is splitting the fan base as he always does, as with every team that he manages. To be honest with you, do we play well as we did against Man United and lose, or do we play this anti-football and collect points as we have been doing, like we like when we were beating Arsenal twice? It was very anti-football for a lot of those games. We still won. This is the problem. This is the issue. But again, guys, it boils also boils down to the players as well as the tactics. Now, this squad that we have, especially the starting eleven that we're about to talk about, um, he we have a we have options in there to play at least two or three formations. Yeah, four five one, five four one, four one four one, four four two, four three three. There's op five times five different formations we can do depending if we're in attack or we're defending which to be honest with you guys we're going to be defending quite a fair bit but for me Aguero has played his last game for us as far as I'm concerned um because of how he played how he is at is basically his attitude in the, in in the Man United game you know get hit this the Man United second goal the first from uh, Garnacho hitting him and bouncing into the net um, and you could see him go, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He knows he can get in the Moroccan side. He doesn't care. He knows that there are, there are other teams looking to get him. So as far as I'm concerned, his head is not with us. I genuinely, genuinely don't think he's going to be with us. Now, but turning to West Ham injuries, there's still no idea on when Antonio is going to be back. There's talk of him being at least on the bench for this game. Uh, Pakatara is still not ready yet, it seems. I still feel, as I said, in the build-up, um, in the preview for the Man United game and, the, and during, during the Man United game as um, watch along as well, I said that I feel that Brentford is going to be the game that he's going to be returning at and I, and I still maintain that. I really, really do. Ariola is 50% chance of returning for this fixture. Now, I'm sure I'm, I've got a funny feeling Fabianski is going to be in there. But for me, it didn't seem that Ariola's injury was all that bad. You know, it was, I'm, I'm sure by the time you guys get to watch this, Moise has said that it was a precaution that he was rested and Fabianski came in. Fabianski didn't do too badly in any shape or form against Man U. I don't think he did. Really don't think he did. Um, granted, conceded two goals and whereas Ariola only conceded one. But yeah, we'll have, we'll have to wait and see, of course, guys. But now we're talking about the starting eleven, um, And I do generally think that we shouldn't be including um, Nayef Agued anywhere near the side anymore. His reaction reminded me of the reactions we were getting from players um, when we got relegated under uh, under Everan Grant. Yeah? Was it Keane, for example, just going... Ugh. You know, it's just stuff like that. I don't think he cares anymore. I really don't think he cares. And as a result of it, guys, I, I do. I generally think he should be dropped. Put your comments in the comment section below. I know this puts us in, puts us in a bit of a bind. You know, because um, you know we've we've got Mavropanos in there, who's more than capable of of playing. Yes, he, he makes mistakes, but no more than Agued does. I do think we should be resting Zuma because I don't think he's ready. He's fully fit from his knee injury, which only means one player. 
So this is the starting eleven that I'm gonna. I'm hoping David Moyes will do. I don't think he will in any shape or form. Put, as I say, guys, put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking on this. But this is the starting eleven that I'm hoping that we will see against Arsenal on Sunday. Ariola in goal with a back four of Soufal, Mavropanos, Ogbonna, and Emerson. Alvarez behind Phillips in the hole, supporting Kudus, Warprouse, and Cornet in midfield with Bowen up front. So thank you very much for your time, guys. Put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you're thinking. As I say, click, please do click the like button. Please do share and subscribe as well for that matter. We will be having the full-time thoughts video on Sunday, so keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, guys, look after yourselves. Take care. And I'm sure my starting 11 has made some controversies, but that's what I want on this channel. I want you guys to give us your thoughts. But in the meantime, guys, look after yourselves. Take care. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you very, very soon. All the best now.